I want to take what you just kind of reviewed apart because a lot of us are playing catch up on understanding these molecular reports. And you just listed off a lot of things that are sort of in the BRCA family, the HRD family. Mm -hmm. You know, Mike Pishvane, one of my partners and friends, did a nice look through the Know Your Tumor through PanCan look. And you know, you'd mentioned RAS before. You know, if you look at the group that's not RAS mutated, a lot of these BRCA's and MSI's are clustered in that 10% or so that aren't. So I keep wondering if one day we'll have some sort of, well, if you're RAS, you're over here, and if you're in that 10%, we're looking for, for other targets. But you know, you, I think you quoted his number. If you look, depending on how you lined up what was uh, HRD or what you thought was an, a real actionable mutation, it was something around 24% of all pancreas cancers had something that we thought was a legitimate, uh, actionable uh, mutation. So Paul, some other data came out uh, around HRD uh, and the like at the meeting. Can you want to kind of give yeah, us an update so, on where that stands? So I think the, there's a bunch of data. I mean, the data from Know Your Tumor, which is a great initiative to pull together this kind of genetic data, uh, did show that there's a pretty high number of patients who have this DDR, DNA depair, depair DNA damage DNA repair. damage there repair, thank you. <coughs> Deficiencies, right? It's a lot of words. Uh, D DDR mutations. Yeah. But it didn't seem in his data as if it really mattered so much unless they were treated with a certain kind of chemotherapy called platinum therapy. Right. There have been other studies. So this meeting, a, a data set from But it was Royal. predictive and prog... No, it was just so predictive It was, it was just predictive end, of response, prognostic. not prognostic right. without treatment. But that was in, the first the demonstration of that using the, that panel. Correct. Uh, and it was right. hundreds of patients. It was over 500 patients. Well, and you yeah. mentioned Foundation before, Karis. They all are guilty of this. If they find any one of those, they might pull down a platinum recommendation. So this was at least on some level a little validation that that's not too far off. But Correct. you were talking about the power of each one of those individual versus the collective. Sorry, yeah, back. So I'd say the Memorial Sloan Kettering published, re released data at this meeting about mm. their over 400 patients with pancreatic cancer who they looked at both the germline and somatic mutations. And what they found, again, with the caveats that this is just in their center, is almost the same findings, that the germline mutation patients did better when they got a platinum. But the somatic mutation patients did not seem to do better. And so raised question, there was a trend, so it wasn't clear where to go with that, but that it may not matter if it's somatic, meaning if it's just in the tumor. It yeah. may only matter if it's germline. Yeah, I do want to also comment that many of the uh, molecular profiling companies are working to develop their assays such that when you do the somatic, you're kind of also getting the germline. We're not really there yet, because when you do germline testing, you get much broader coverage, so you don't miss stuff. Whereas with the somatics, they've looked at hot spots, if you will. So the more we're seeing whole exome you know, sequencing, the more that they may overlap. But for now, I just kind of wanted to reiterate that these do measure different things, um, and one not necessarily concordant uh, with the other. So uh, certainly more targets to come. Pancreas cancer is not dead to targets. Add some other stuff that's coming out. The COMPASS trial, give us an update on what that showed. So the COMPASS study is, I think, a very, um, the investigators should be applauded for a very aggressive um, approach capturing on sort of what we're talking about, that there is a need to try to profile our patients. And they attempted to robustly profile um, over 150 patients looking to patients that had not been treated and to take tumor tissue, isolate it, and actually profile for whole genome sequencing as well as RNA, and to return that information as quickly as possible. And the median time to actually returning data was about 35 days, which is quite fast. Um, what I think one of the issues is still that is that fast enough yeah. to make decisions in real time? And one of the things that came out of that study was where they could profile um, patients into a Moffitt classification of either classical or basal. Classical tends to do better, basal less, about a quarter of patients are basal-like. And there was an identification of a marker, a surrogate, that you could test just that, something called GATA6, which is a transcription factor that um, is involved in differentiation. If you have high expression of GATA6, that clearly co goes along with um, the classical subtype. And so instead of doing this whole sequence, you could cut down the timeline and test just for GATA6 potentially. Yeah. So, you know, one of the most common questions that we all get asked is why aren't we moving the bar faster in pancreas cancer? And what you're getting at, Ed, is this we're, we're starting to subclassify. Um, do you guys, anybody think that this is really the way we're going to have to go with this disease and um, find its different groups and then we'll make headway? Sure. Okay. 
So uh, <clears throat> I may take a contrary view, view on this in subject. So I'm actually, you know, I do target therapy as 50% of my time. So uh, I keep on looking at this. So I, I think we are, uh, you know, again, everybody wants to be like lung, but I, it's not hmm. lung, right? So there's a lot of pancreatic cancer. Who would ever thought <laughs> we would say? I know. <laughs> <it's laughs> <not laughs> like lung. So I was telling, I was, I was joking with somebody saying, on, I gave a presentation recently on uh, newer therapeutics and, you know, early phase drug development in pancreatic cancer. And one of my slides was a glioblastoma patient on TJ beta therapy, which I, who actually got a response. And I showed that saying, you know, when I was doing my fellowship, which was I'm dating myself sometime back, we used to get platinum carbotaxol. It was the easiest question on our, on our boards, yeah. carbotaxol, uh, for lung cancer. And uh, it used to be a fight between lung and pancreatic, yeah. you know, saying, you know, this is a tough disease. And, well, that's been settled. And so I said, you know, glioblastoma is our only... <laughs> You know where you know where really where we are looking to make advances and everything. Uh, you know as far as our median survival is concerned. So, but what happens is I think we really when we look at this, still if you look at the bigger picture, I think for our uh, you know for our audience for community oncologists, you look at the bigger picture. One you know when you look at the germline testing, I think everybody should do it. So that's five percent. You can pick that up and give them platinum first, or we'll see if you know what happens with the laparib story. Uh, as it further matures in other PARP inhibitors. With the somatic testing, still, you have to have access to clinical trials. So you do the somatic testing, you find something. If you don't have access to clinical trials, then it really, if you're in a small town somewhere, then it's, it's harder to... Well, to be fair, you know, you still have your rare stuff. You have your MSIs, you have an occasional <clears throat> intrac, and if you don't look, you won't find it. Right. And so there is some motive for wanting to do that with approved drugs. Yeah. Uh, the, the other thing is, uh, I think the MSI, yes, you know, you can do a simple IHC. You don't need to do the whole profiling. I do mm. think, on the other side, I do think people should be profiled. I'm not saying that. <laughs> but I, I just say that, you know, you're really looking at yeah. it really to break that. And the question was to break that down like a little pie chart into 5% this, 2% this. It's much harder in pancreatic cancer. And I think we're really ignoring, you know, not ignoring, but I think we really need to focus on you know, the KRAS driven tumors, because when the RAS is turned on, it's very hard. Mm -hmm. The pancreatic cancer microenvironment is very tough to overcome. So I think those are where we should, be, we have to focus our further research efforts. I jokingly have called 2019 the year of the RAS instead mm -hmm. of the RAT, <coughs> um, just because I do think there's some emerging therapies in, in RAS. So fingers crossed that we will find that. And if we were, that's obviously a major breakthrough right. if we could start to drive uh, I, I against think RAS. When you, when you compare us to lung cancer, they have a pie chart. Yeah. That looks well, nice. they didn't always have a they pie chart. They didn't always chart, have right? a pie chart. They've discovered more. Right. We have a pie chart, too. It's just dominated by RAS. Yeah. <laughs> and I think it's not that we don't know the mutations. Yeah. We do, and we just need effective therapies. Now, I don't think it's going to be one. I wish it would be. Yeah, it's but complicated there, there's going to be RAS. There better be, <laughs> or else we're in Could trouble. Also, to point out, the, the numbers traditionally have included the scope of everyone diagnosed with pancreatic cancer. There's a decent percentage of patients that never get offered any treatment at all. And they're included in that. And so if we treating more patients and also doing genetic testing to uncover more mutations, I think that these survival rates will increase in a meaningful way in the next 20 years or so. But it's, it's, we really have to make sure that everybody gets offered treatment. In I this think that's disease. such a, an amazing point because, you know, we, five years ago, what we were just saying is quit being therapeutic nihilist treat right. them, we have new medicines, and now what we're arguing is sort of the next step of that, uh, it's worth looking, because you might, you don't know what we're gonna find until we start looking. And I completely agree with Allison on that. I think we, it's, it's all of the above. You know, we need to hit, you know, chemo, you know, target therapy where it's appropriate, and then looking for ways to target the RAS pathway. I mean, it's kind of all of the above which will drive our science. So I think we should be looking at the, you know, the bigger forest, like looking at the a whole picture to say, how can we target these different ways and when we cannot, you know, what's the, what's the chemotherapy backbone that we can use in these patients?